Sars. Louder. <laughs> okay. uh, my name is Jane Tong. Spell it. T O N G. And Ray maiden name. Heisler. H E I S L E R. And you were born where? In Kentucky. Right. Okay. <laughs> and I came to be uh, Evansville, and nobody was hiring except the Sires. And they uh, drew me a picture and I got to work that day. And what year do you work? From what I year to what year? 44 to 82. Wow. But uh, I stopped and had a child in between. So I changed. I was a wel welder the first years and the last years I worked in down in production. Yes. Um, and what do you think about the most memorable event? Seeing those big cranes being made, or what do you think was the most memorable event? Well, you'll think this is dumb, but uh, I uh, was welding, and somebody held up a mouse in front of the lady that was I was welding with, and she had a convulsion. Just. <laughs> I thought she was dying. I never had seen anyone have a convulsion before. <laughs> oh, boy. They get all the mice out of there after that. No more mice in the sirens after that. Well, yeah. they got scolded. My grandmother was a secretary there from 1914 1918. Oh, Got a picture of the old bizarres in the older building there. Yeah. That was way before my time. Yeah, a little bit before you. And your husband didn't work there, did he? Yes, he did. Can you tell us what years he worked there in his name? Uh, his name was Fred, T O N G, and he was overseas in the Battle of the Bulge, and he came home. And uh, he got on at Usars, and he was a machinist. He worked in the machine shop. And, uh, see, he got home in '46, and he worked until he was 62. So '46 till what year? 62. Till 62. Okay. All right. Now 1992. 92. Okay. Yes. All right. Well, thank you very much. And if you think of something else, we'll have you back on. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. This is a summary of Bucyrus Erie individual interviews. Okay. Uh, my name is Graham, G R A H A M. First name is Billy. Middle name is Joe. Um, I go by BJ, Joe, and most any other name. I was born and raised out in Powell um, and went to Wright's High School, graduated in 49. Uh, I went first to Liberty Mutual Insurance and worked there five years and managed to get fired. And so I then went to USARS and I was very upset because of having been fired and I thought nobody else would ever hire me. But Evelyn King was like the secretary at the time and she says, oh, that's no problem. I'll just put down you put quit for a better position. <laughs> and I started off working, I guess, in the purchasing department and spent most of my time there and that was in 1955. And I worked as a order typist and I finally got to the top of the pay grade and they said in order to get a promotion I had to learn shorthand, which I had neglected to do in high school, so I went out to the University of Evansville and took enough shorthand that I could get by. And I worked for several of the different buyers. Uh, one of the funny stories I think about was one of the guys from maintenance had come up and was going to put some bookshelves in my boss's office. And my boss told him that there was the wall was not, you know, what he was going to put it into was not heavy enough. Look at look here. We cleaned that building once already today. Hey, they do dirt. They do dirt. You just <laughs> No, the wife's out there in the bed. Right. She's coming in the bed. I want to take a seat here. Hi, Jeff, dude. How are you? Good. Good. We got Mr. Pettis here, and he was a Bissarius Harry. Mrs. Herndon over here. She was Bissarius Harry. Ms. Herndon, turn around here. She's Bissarius Harry, and we're going to interview them in just a minute. Right here in the middle of the interview with Joe here. Yeah. The doctor just spent three hours with that gentleman. 
He's bad. He, he, he quite a, he's quite a gentleman. It's really nice. It's good. Okay, go ahead. So thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. So you remember things you didn't remember. That's right. To make a long story short, he broke out the tile on the back side of the wall, and he was kind of upset about it. And he said, "I sure hope Jack Bushkill doesn't come through here and see what I've done." About that time, Jack walked through. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, uh, working at Bussars was really a good experience and enjoyed it uh, and was sorry to see them close and I stayed until they closed in 1982. Don Smith was our neighbor. He used to be a, he came from Milwaukee there. You might remember him, tall, bald-headed guy, but he worked there for years, yeah. yeah. And the Toppers worked there too, a lot of oh, yes. Toppers, yes. yes. Tom Topper's dad, I think, yeah. worked there, yes. Yeah, so anyhow, like you say, you were amongst friends, and it was really a great experience. Well, thank you very much, Joe. Appreciate it. <laughs> My name is Sylvia Sawyer, S-A-W-Y-E-R. I was born and raised in Evansville, graduated from Memorial High School in 1956 and very promptly started with Pusaris Erie and stayed there until 1982, was one of the last ones to leave when they closed the doors. I worked in various uh, departments while I was there, mostly in production and inventory control. Uh, I went there to begin with because my dad had worked there for years, so we both retired from there. and. It was a great place to work, and I think the most fascinating thing to me was when they would load those huge machines on a railroad flat car, and they would go past the office when they were getting ready to ship them out, and you just wondered how in the world anybody could put anything together that was that big. And yeah. I love the place and sure wish it was still going. Yeah. We're sure a big asset to Evansville, 250 plus employees. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Get better. Now speak up. Harold Pettis, South Alabama, uh, born in Slaughter's, Kentucky, went to school in Bannersville, last Slaughter, graduated from Slaughter, went in the Army in September of uh, 1943, came out in uh, 19, June of 1946, started working for Sarts in 1946. Uh, Stayed with them until 1982. What was your job at Bucyrus, uh, Harold? Scheduler. Scheduler for the Scheduler repair, repair parts. So the old parts that came in, you re had scheduled repairs on new it. New ones. New parts, That's yeah. New parts, right. That's it, yeah. uh, what do you think about Bucyrus? Is it a good occupation for people in Evansville and a good, good paychecks for everybody? Very best. Yes. I enjoyed every minute of it. And the building's still standing there on the west side on T-Couple. Right. Probably as big as a football field. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Harold. Uh, I'm Charlie Swartz. I went to high school at Harrison Holder Name and uh, didn't complete high school. I went to work at Bussard's area when I was uh, 16 years old. Went to welding school, studied blueprint. I welded for 36 years. And I still love everything I do. And I love getting together with all my friends, relatives, and people that I know. It's just like family here. What year did you retire? What this year? At 40... No. In 69. 69. Yeah. And you really like welding? Did you weld the big parts or little parts? I welded both. The cabs. I welded the cabs that went over and also welded on the Titan missile silos that went to New Mexico. Uh, certified with the government. I had a chance to go to offshore drilling and also the Alaskan pipeline. I turned those down, but I, I still like working for the uh, uh, missile silo. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any, any things that was most unique for you for with Bucyrus? The most unique experience? Well, uh, studying the blue rats. Yeah. Studying and understanding that. everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because I didn't finish high school. I got yeah. my education right yeah. there the hard way. But yeah. It was wonderful. Thank you very much, Mr. Swart. Okay, Appreciate thank you. you. Okay. Benedict, Keith J. And I uh, worked at Bussar 32 years. And uh, I started there right after World War II. And uh, let's see. Uh, Were you in World War II? Oh, yeah. What did you do in World War II? I was in the Marine Corps on the Pacific. Is he? So Iwi Kuni and Iwi, uh, uh, Okinawa and all that? Yeah. yeah. My wife was in the Marine Corps too in World War II. Yeah. Huh. And uh, 
newspaper wrote a good article about it at one time, took pictures and everything. It's in the newspaper. Is that right? Huh. But uh, Bucerus, I worked as a machinist. Uh, I was uh, uh, foreman in the machine shop. I was foreman in uh, sub-assembly. I was general foreman of shipping and assembly for a while, and then I was night superintendent. And when you were foreman, what did you supervise? The making of the cranes or making of the silos or making of what? When I, when I was uh, uh, supervisor uh, in the, in the uh, erecting department, we built uh, shovels, cranes, drills. Uh, the size of a car, about the size of a car. Yeah, and uh, uh, hydro cranes. I had that department for a while. We had uh, we built the uh, elevators for uh, missiles out west. You knew that, didn't you? Elevators for what? Oh, elevators for the missiles out west. Yes. Uh, yes. CBM. Huh. We built them huh. uh, when I was in the erecting department, yeah. assembly department. The assembly department, I had shipping, building, uh, assembly, and testing, you know, the whole business. Were you always stationed here in Evansville, or you stationed oh, yeah, in other I'm places? Evansville. Just Evansville, no other, no other other plans, no. Milwaukee or Pennsylvania, nothing, yeah, yeah. No, but I made several trips to Milwaukee in, in, in the position I was in. Yes. Yeah. Did you think it was a good employment for Evansville and people very that worked bad. there liked it? The very best. Yeah, yeah. I don't think you could beat it. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mr. Benedict. Thank you. Okay, my name is Gail Hawkins. Uh, maiden I, name? Maiden name Cates, C A T E S. I went to Daniel Works Grade School, Wrights yeah. High School, and I just walked from one end of Claremont down to the other, which was where Busire Siri was. That was in 1956. And I had a brother-in-law that worked in the uh, factory. I didn't think they had a very big office, but I found out they did have a good office, a big office. Uh, Benny Snyder was the one that interviewed me, and he was mostly impressed because they would give you a paper, a letter that was very in rough draft form. They would set you down at a typewriter and they would you would have to set up the typewriter and everything and type up a letter, which is a good test. And he asked me, do you want me to show you how to set up the typewriter? And I said, no, that's all right. I know how. Fortunately, at Wright's, we had various typewriters. And he said that was what really impressed him was the fact that he didn't have to tell me anything or show me anything. So I worked at Miss Iron theory probably for close to 24 years. I took a couple of years off to have a daughter and um, in the meantime I'd had a divorce and as it will would happen I married a man from Yusire Siri. We had a uh, Christmas dance in the office did and of course the shop really wasn't invited so someone said why don't you ask Dale Hawkins to go to the dance and I said oh okay so that's how we met each other, and so I have this Siri to thank for most of my life, I think. Good that night. And Dale, of course, he was there for 50 years. He worked in the maintenance department, and I worked upstairs in the office, so we really didn't get to see each other, except we would meet at the back door, and he would bring me over something he had warmed up in the... Uh, rod warming or welding or something, some kind of an oven they had over there. Yeah. Didn't have microwaves back then. But it's been a good life and I've enjoyed it and I thought that I'd be there forever. We all were all sorry to see the Sire Siri left town, leave town. My but. grandmother was Mrs. Sullivan and she was worked as a secretary there from 1914 to 1918. She went to Central High School. It was called Evansville High School then and then she went to Lockyer. And she would type letters, and I'd see her letters and type, and she always used about 10 carbons. I don't oh, know if you yes. use carbons, but she had yes. more carbons. Everything she did was probably 10 carbons. I mean, that typewriter had to be strong to hit, hard enough to get all those carbons through, but she was a lover of carbons. Did you use carbon oh, paper yes. then? Onion skin for yeah. copies and carbon paper. Yeah. We didn't know what any of the other stuff yeah. was. And if your boss decided he wanted to change something, that meant you had to go back and you had to type that letter all over again. You didn't have to. But that it was, was fine. It wasn't like today where you can change it, and then you had to retype the whole right. thing. You had to retype oh. the whole thing, right. And 
I worked most of the time. I started out in the blueprint department, uh, stuffing blueprints into travelers. I thought that was the most wonderful job. And then an opening came in the uh, parts department. Yeah. And I eventually wound up as secretary to the parts manager. And I was probably there longer than any parts manager because it seems like the parts managers, there was a big turnover in them, but there wasn't in the secretaries. Yeah. I was very happy. Don Smith was our neighbor back in the 1960s, and he was a vice president. Came down from Milwaukee, bald headed guy, about six foot one or so. Yes. I don't know if you remember him or not, but he was part of Bucyrus. He yes. came down from, was there about eight years, I think, or so, but uh, uh, he might not have been at the parts very often, but you probably saw him. I think he's more in sales. Yes, well, we were, we were like part of the sales department. Yeah. We really were uh, governed or managed by Milwaukee out of the sales so you, department. You remember him, huh? Yes, Don Smith? I, re I remember the name, yes. Yeah. How about Kenny Hahn? Do you remember him? Oh, yes. Kenny Hahn. Kenny oh, Hahn. I'm very Kenny. familiar with him. Everybody knew Kenny. Oh, Kenny, yeah. yeah. So he, yeah, was, he was in sales, too. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Those salesmen, you got to watch them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, Ms. Hawkins. Appreciate You're it. Okay. A moment of silence for those that can't be with us. Thank thee, Lord, for our chance to get together, for the good friendship, the good food we're about to have, and let's hope that we can continue to meet like this to have a safe trip back home. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to say who goes first, just when you see the line, there ain't many up there going up. <laughs> Bill Kinchlow. Bill Kinchlow? Yes. Favorite of Waitsville, Indiana. I worked at Buzars 40 years. What year to what year? I uh, started in 43, 42. 42. And what part of the Buzars did you work in? Machine shop. Machine shop. What did you do in a machine shop? Sort of, did you do the, use the lathe? I, I used several different machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Making mostly the... Uh, the uh, bulldozers, or make mostly cranes, or most making silos for the uh, for the uh, for the missiles. Everything. Everything. A little, little bit of everything. Yeah. Did you work eight hours a day mostly? Uh, mostly eight, sometimes ten. Yeah. How'd you get there from Waysville? Did you take the train? Uh, had an automobile drove. Automobile. Day. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, what was your most unique thing about Bucyrus? What do you think about? What was the neatest thing that you ever saw that happened in Bucyrus? Oh, that, that'd be hard to say. Say. And those machines pretty big, help make the Panama Canal? Some of them, yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Any uh, special friends you've got from uh, Bucyrus? Yeah, i got a lot of good friends who yeah. work at Bucyrus, yeah. What reunion is this for us, the 20th? Is this the 20th yeah, reunion? I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Kip yeah. Okay, my name is Joanne Walker. My maiden name was Hawkins. I went to school in Harrisburg, Illinois. I graduated in 1951. I came to Evansville, went to Lockyer's, and I worked a number of places. I happened to be caught in the middle of the recession, and I got a job at Bizarre City, and I stayed there for 27 years in the same job. What year was the recession, and what year did you get uh, your job? Uh, I went to work there in 1955. So recession in the United States or in Evansville then? Yeah. Because we lost... lost, uh, lost we some... lost Cervell, we lost Hancock Trucking, we lost Hoosier Cardinal. I don't know who, don't remember who all. 55 was a bad year right. here. Right. Terrible year. Right. Yeah. Um, what do you think the most unique thing was, uh, Ms. Hawkins, about the uh, Bucyrus? What, what, what was it? The fellowship? Was it the way they'd get a product, or was it all the great big tools that they made? Well, it was more uh, the friendship. I had the same job for 27 years, and I knew just about everybody in that plant. Yeah. yeah. Um, Why did you move from Harrisburg to Indiana? And do you like Indiana more than Harrisburg? Well, I went to school at Lockyer's Business College, mm -hmm. and my brother lived here, so yes. that was the natural thing for me to do, really. My grandmother did the same thing back in the 1910s. <laughs> went to the Lockyer <laughs> Business School, then she was at Bucyrus for about four years oh, as really? a secretary there. I think she left there in 1917 or 1918, but she was way yeah. ahead of you. But yeah. Uh, yeah. she loved it there, and she 
used carbon paper. I don't know oh, if you type the carbon paper. Every time I saw a letter from her, she had 10 pieces of carbon paper in it. The old ditto machine. Oh, yes. The, like the onion skin stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. But the most thing that I remember the best was when Mount St. Helens blew. When what? When Mount St. Helens blew. That blew in about 82, didn't it? I had to get a permit from the government for park trucking to travel 24 hours a day to get a machine out there. To get a machine, what did they do out there with the machine? They, Bolt? they got the logs out of the river. Logs out of the river, it was in a special machine Bucyrus had, mm -hmm. and you had to get all the paperwork to get I on a train, special trains to get out there. Yeah. And the it, logs were clogging the river up? Uh, is that, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. That had been 82, I think, when Mount St. Helens. That had been about the last year of Bucyrus in Evansville. Uh, I left there in 83. 83. And uh, another thing was, one time I went to the Ellen and Railroad, I needed a rail car, and they would get, they did not supply one. And I walked to the Ellen and Railroad, and I said, I'm going to stay here until you give me a railroad car. And I rode back on their engine. On the engine, and they gave you a car <laughs> all the way? They gave me a car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and okay. then we shipped the missiles. I was in charge of all the paperwork for shipping, getting trucks and railroad cars and everything. Oh, you saw logistics of unbelievable significance, getting the railroads to cooperate, getting the clearance right. to cross state right. lines and right. get it to the right place. Right. Well, that's something. <laughs> well, you sure learned a lot. It was an in interesting it was, life, wasn't it? It was an experience. Yeah. And well. it worked many, 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 many hours, didn't we? <laughs> okay. You say your first and last name again. Joanne. Walker. My maiden name was Hawkins. Hawkins, okay. Well, thank you, Miss Walker. Okay. My name is Dale Hawkins, but I'm known as Hawkeye at Bucyrus. I was born in Arkansas, went to school there, and come to Indiana, and went to service for three years. And 1946, I, December, I uh, went to work at Bucyrus. I worked there for 36 years in a maintenance department, but most of the time I uh, worked on lift trucks. A lot of the boys didn't know my first name. The only thing they knew was Hawkeye. Go see Hawkeye, isn't that right, Pettis? And uh, he's one of the old boys. And yeah, 1946. Cold, man, I'm telling you, it was cold. So you worked in supply? Pardon? What would you work in? What department? Maintenance department. Maintenance. So what did maintenance do? Make sure the, the, the roof wasn't leaking and make sure all the machines worked? Or what did you oh, do? I, I was a machine repairman, and then they transferred me over to work on lift trucks. Because. And then, then I, they would call me a vehicle maintenance man. Oh, I had a few titles. How far did they break down a lot of times? You had to fix everything. You were working every day. A lot yeah. of times things needed yeah. fixing all the time. Every day. Yeah. Works. Most of the time we work six to seven day, six days a week, but a lot of times it was seven. Yeah. Just according to how far behind we got. How'd you know how to fix all that stuff? Did you have a lot of training or you just learned it on the job? No, you trained on the job. Uh -huh. Yeah. A lot of that equipment was real big and a lot of very unique things. Hard yeah. to learn that stuff. How did you learn how to do all that? Just Got experience, huh? Yeah, it got a lot of experience on it. Did you ever go to the Milwaukee plant or the Pennsylvania plant or any of the other plants? No. Just Evansville? Yeah. You don't even have an accent from a Razorback, Arkansas. You don't have an accent. Oh, yeah. Why'd you? Oh, there, <laughs> that happened in Bucyrus? Yeah, that happened. Stuck my fan, hand in a fan blade on a lift truck. Wow, wow. Yeah. About eight o'clock in the morning. Shoot, that was terrible, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, why'd you come up to Evansville from Arkansas? Well, I worked in the oil field. I was Griffin, Indiana. That's where I started out in the oil field. So you're wet back, or we're not yeah. wet back. What do you call those? That uh, was about 1937. Yeah, 37. You worked yeah. oil fields. They then, were pretty then, big then. Then I went to the service in Mount Vernon. Yeah. Spent three three years, and I was a uh, uh, met it in the third air force in Gulfport, Mississippi. Go to Europe or stay down in Gulfport? Yeah. Where'd you go during the World War II? Huh? Where'd you go during World War II? Gulfport? Well, I ended up one time down in Panama and then I come back and they put me in a, what to call a crash boat outfit. We had some three boats and uh, 
plane would fly out over the Gulf, and if he crashed, we had to go out and pick him up. But we never did have to pick nobody up. <laughs> but I worked in the hospital yeah. as a ward boy down there, taking care of the sick people. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that's about the total of my life. What year did you uh, stop working at Busaris? What year was that? When did I stop? When Ernie sold out to Continental. 83. And then Continental closed up, said you retired at 59. I says, thank you, sir. What year was that, 1984 or 83? Huh? What year was that? That was in 82. Who was Continental? They were a company that bought Busiris? Uh, Continental Oil Company. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't do well with the no, Busiris? It they, they didn't last a year. Yeah. <laughs> so that was about us totally. He can tell you mo more about it than I can. Well, thank yeah. you very much for talking. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Reeves, Albert, I, uh, I graduated uh, from high school in Mount Vernon, Indiana, attended Lane's Drafting College, uh, went to work with uh, drafting in George Cook's Sons, and I was there for 10 years, and in 61, I came to Bussard's area as a, a buyer in the purchasing department, and uh, it was always known that if you worked for Bussard's, you could live, work and retire there. You didn't have to work. but. Uh, when they closed it down, I was 55, and they every place that I went, I couldn't even get a pricing clerk's job because they would say you're overqualified. They didn't want to hire a 55-year-old person, but I enjoyed the uh, employees, and I even married uh, the nurse, and uh, that was 61 years ago. Wow. But uh, enjoy these get-togethers. Did they only have one nurse there for the whole plan, or they have two? No, they had uh, two, I think. Two, uh, two. Yes. For little small injuries, like the one guy, Mr. Hawkins, cut his finger off, and the nurse had to take care of that, I'm sure. But there are a lot of little injuries there, because all that big industry there, there's always going to be some injuries. Right. And uh, it uh, is still always nice to talk about the SARS recovery. Now, drafting, that's a pretty interesting skill. Drafting would mean that you would draw the plans of some of these big cranes. Well, and, no, and I, I, was, I was in drafting at George Cook's Sons. I see. And when I came to Yassar's, I was hired in as a purchasing buyer. So purchasing. And uh, we purchased equipment uh, for the equipment that we built. Did you also purchase materials such as steel and other yes, things like that? Yes, tubing and uh, booms tubing for the booms and, uh, well, all of the equipment. Did you make the booms there? Yes, yes. The booms so you, from scratch or yes. you would get the steel brought in and you bent it around and well, did whatever? Tubing, tubing, yes. The tubing inside there yes. and all the, the uh, wheels Tubular in it? Booms. Yes. How and about the, the silos? Did you buy or get any equipment for the silos that you made for the missiles? Uh, not that I know of. It's been so long ago. That How about I... bulldozers? Any bulldozers, middle size? No. Mostly just cranes. Yeah. Uh, yes, we built the mid-sized cranes, and the larger ones were built at Milwaukee, and yes. the smaller ones were built at Erie. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, did you just work in Evansville, or did you work in Milwaukee or in Erie? No, in I worked here at Evansville, but I made trips to Milwaukee. Yeah. Uh, in discussion with purchasing, uh, trying to combine. Uh, vendors with all three plants. What school did you go to in Mount Vernon? Mount Vernon High? Mount Vernon no Charlie High. Haynes over there? Charles Haynes, yes. I knew his son yeah. and uh, the principal was Charlie Haynes. Charlie Haynes taught me in high school. When he left Mount Vernon, he went and taught chemistry at Memorial and he was my teacher in chemistry. Is that right? He could, at eight years old, he could still do 10 chin-ups. He was a heck of an athlete. I yeah. mean, he was a smart guy and he really cared a lot about teaching. Now, is this uh, old Charlie or the young The old Charlie, Charlie taught old me. Charlie. The old Charlie taught me. Yeah, he used to, I heard, I don't know how true it is, that he used to run from Upton to Mount Vernon. I believe it. He was a heck of a runner. He was a fast runner. He was a track man, too. Did you go to Hedges? Uh, yeah, it was known as Central when yeah. I went through there. Yeah. yeah, my wife taught at Hedges for 15 years over there. And when you... What was her name? Miller. Miller was a maiden name. How did you get back and forth from Mount Vernon to to uh, Bucyrus? Did you take the bus I, or? Did you I go? moved to Evansville and uh, 
married, and then when I came to Bussard, I lived in Evansville. And took the car back and forth? Yes, the wife and I split the car. She worked second shift, and I was going to Crafty, and I'd walk the railroad out to Bussard to get the car. I see. <laughs> Not like today, everybody's got two cars. Well, at, that, at that time, you cut the cars, didn't you? Back there, it was cheaper just to have one. Yes, it's in cheaper fact, now to have one, too. In fact, I, I, we only had money for one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, say your first and last name again. My last name is Reeves. My first name is Albert. I'm known as Al or Ab. It depends on who knows me by what they call me. Okay, well, thank you very much, Mr. Okay, Reeves. Appreciate thank it. Okay. You're okay, I'm Marvin L. Zwallen. I'm hired. Say it again. I'm Marvin L. Zwallen. I started for SARS. Uh, April the 24th, 1956. I got out of service April Friday the 13th. That's a good number. Good number. Who's this young lady with and you? My wife is Darlene. Darlene, okay. She married in uh, July 18th, 59. And what church? Uh, Salem Church, north of Darmstadt. North Darmstadt. Still there. B pretty white church. Yep. Beautiful church up there. Still, Still really there. kept up very nicely. Right. Yes, Bruce. sir. Uh, now, you uh, started Bucyrus in 1956. Can you tell me a little bit what you what you did for Bucyrus? I started there as a turret lay operator, and after I got on the swing of the end, I, I made the incentive, and then when they got laid off, I worked in the, in the tool cataloging for a year or two or something like that. Then I went back down the shop and run a turret lay and jig mill, bore, bore mill, and the last seven years, cut gear, cut teeth on gears. Wow. And I worked till July the 2nd, 82. 82. They closed about then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, boy, you worked the teeth on the gears. Was that the gears for the, uh, for the, in the big machine that would make the crane? Is that right. what? Yeah. Bevel gears. Yeah, bevel, bevel gears. gears and, and helical gears, worm gears. We ran them all down there. And they'd be made out of steel and they wouldn't get too hot when all no, the wires would go over them? We ran them out of steel and the worm gears was made out of brass. Out of brass. And they held up pretty well. They're guaranteed for 10 years or something? Uh, at least. <laughs> yeah. And um, then you worked another couple places. What else did you, what other? After SARS closed, I worked at Hans. I ran the, the helix on the, on the end plate of the pump. Yes. And uh, I had to pump 115 gallon and in, 50, in 150, 150 pounds of pressure in uh, 15 gallon a minute wow. of kerosene. And after I went there, I went to a tool shop, uh, Wilder Tool and Mold. I worked, ran a tour, uh, lathe there, and besides farming. Besides farming, farming too. That, right. that, was, that was your hobby, but that, right. that uh, make a and living at home. The farm from. Uh, I'd say 80 acres to 1,500 acres now. Wow! So you do corn and soybean. That's corn, what most everybody. Corn, soybeans, and wheat. Yeah. Wheat all of them. Winter wheat. You do it all three, huh? Right. Do all three. No wildlife. No cow. No livestock. No livestock. That'll kill you. That's right. Yeah. Uh, now, at Bucyrus, uh when they made all those machines, uh, and they shipped them out on train or truck, or how'd they ship those things out? They shipped them uh, mostly uh, by truck, truck and train. Yeah. And. Uh, my neighbor out the road has got the water well drills. He's got a 20W 20, 20 and 22W. And one of them's made in Evansville. And so he should be there at the spring fall with his machine. <laughs> and they made these these cranes. They made them for everywhere around the country. Uh, that crane's probably uh, 50 feet high or something like that. Pretty big. There's some up at, there's one up at uh, Elberfeld. And there's one as a museum in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, uh, Kansas. Kansas. Yes. Right close to the, uh, Branson, you know, not far yeah. from Branson. On those it's a museum. It's from 16 acres down there. And it's got one of the Busiris old yeah. cranes. My name's listed on the flat. Is that right? In Kansas. In yeah. Kansas. Huh. When they make those cranes and they make that steel, that big boom for them, why do they make it narrow at the top and narrow at the bottom and wide in the center? Why do they do that? Does that I, help? The I strength? really don't know. Yeah. But the tubular booms are pressurized uh -huh. in case a crack would dis be discovered. It's monitored in the cab so it don't have a boom collapse. I see. And the what? Yeah, go ahead. And the tube, that's all I know about the tubular booms. And the wires that are up inside that boom, what are they doing? They're just adjusting the height and the weight and the, the pull on that. Did you make any of that stuff? 
I don't know anything about that. Yeah, okay. I was just machine shop, and I was on inspection for a while. Did you lay, use the lathe sometime? Did you make work on the lathe? Yeah, I worked on the lathe, I guess, most of the time down there. I was second and third shift. Yeah, and what did you make on the lathe? The part of the, the parts to the, parts. the cab or the other part? No, we machined the shivs and, and the working parts of the machine. Huh, yeah. Okay, well, it was very interesting. Um, can you tell me what it was like being a wife of a wife of a retired Siri guy? You gotta speak up now. What was it like being a wife? Did he ever get home on time? Oh, he came home very promptly. Uh, he worked second and third shifts, so it was hard to raise kids yeah. and keep the house quiet while Dad was trying to sleep. We had four kids. Uh, I also helped because we we were farming all yeah. along with yeah. that yeah. job. Wow. So I was in the field a lot with the tractors and wow. working right alongside him to get the farm work done. Did you live in northern, up in Darmstadt area? We live Still on live there? North St. Joe Avenue. Yes. Where we Hornville. For Hornville years area. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And how would he get back and forth to work? Just a car? With his pickup truck, pickup truck. very yeah. fast. Yeah. <laughs> very fast. He, he has a lead foot. Lead foot. Yeah. Yes, How many tickets was, he get? Just two? No, I don't know that he got too many tickets, but because uh, I guess the guys were off duty when he was coming and going. Okay. I slid sideways in a guy one time. I, I could make it 11 miles in 10 minutes. <laughs> That's moving on St. Joe. Yeah. It wasn't the highway. Yeah. I, okay. I wouldn't try it down anymore. Okay, say your last name and first name, last name. Marvin Elds Wallen. Okay, thanks. Thank, Thank you. Okay. My name's Richard Gibson, and that's I your went, wife there. This is my wife, yeah. Janet. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Sure. Okay. And I went to school in Missouri, and I came from Missouri when I married her to Evansville, Indiana. My father-in-law worked at Bussars area, and I kept going out there to try and get a job and get on after some other places here in town, like old Han and that that laid you off and one thing. Benny Snyder told me one day, he said, come in here, Gibson, I'm tired of you sitting around in my office, I'm gonna put you to work. And he took me down and started me out in the machine shop on third shift. And I worked in maintenance from there for the rest of the years I was there. And I had 22 and a half years of service with USARS Air. One of the best companies anywhere to work for. We always had a good time. It was like a family out there. And these two gentlemen, Bob Hass and Dale Hawkins, and Gail Hawkins, his wife, all worked out there. And they have got stories to tell that you can't imagine. Uh, I got a few. Your, not your a main, lot. the most humorous or the most eventful thing that happened to you, Besires, if you remember. I'm sure there were a lot of things, but anything stick out in your memory more than others? Well, I worked with a, a friend of mine. Uh, Earl Wittenheimer, and he and I became very close, good friends. And Lee Hicks, who was her husband, who's passed away. Shirley Hicks is here with us, and we used to always be getting into something, doing something. Kind of, there was always something going on. And uh, Earl and I would sneak up to the education center when they had people come in for training services, and we'd raid the. Uh, breakfast early in the morning and take it upstairs in the boiler room and eat the donuts and stuff and then we'd go back at lunchtime and attack again and, <laughs> and take the lunch upstairs and eat it. They didn't have much left. And Lee and, and uh, Earl and I every Friday night was our ritual to go down to the Super Inn and have a few beers down there. And, and uh, Was that on the west side over yeah, on Teacouple, on near yeah, Teacouple and, and uh, that other Barker what Road. Was it, Bob Teacup and Barker? No, it was on Broadway. On Broadway, Broadway, on Broadway, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seven yeah. Cross. Seven, seven Cross. Seven Cross. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gone now, of course. Yeah. We'd go down there and have a few beers and mushrooms, and Bob would come down there and some of the other guys. And it was, it was just a, a great, great place to work. It was, it was fun all the time and extremely interesting. Had some of the best mechanics and machine tool operators and assembly people that you'd ever probably heard. anywhere in the nation worked out there. I collect USARS memorabilia. If you're interested in seeing some of it, I'd be glad to show you some. We might stuff. film it sometime and put it sequentially, yeah. put names under what it all is. Yeah, we might do that and put it on this DVD. 
you've got to, Mr. Gibson? Yeah. Gibson. Yeah. Ms. Gibson, your and your father was was an employer there for employee there for how many years? What year what year did your dad work there? What year did you work? Well I went there in sixty three, sixty four. So your dad there about twenty years ahead of him? He was there yeah, he was there during the war and that. He liked it there and had yes. a pretty good like experience. Family. He, and he sort of convinced him to go. His name was Gillis Simmons. Uh-huh. Yes, well. He worked as a machine operator. Yeah. He was a radio arm drill operator. Oh, yeah. And a very good one. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you very much. And we're going to ask these two guys a couple of things. Mr. Hess, Mr. Hess is here. This Mr. Hess. Okay, I want you to say your last name, first name, where you came from, what, and where you went to grade school, and then why you went to be Cyrus. You're on. Okay. Uh, my name is Bob Hass. Uh, I'm a West Side boy. Uh, and I went to Daniel Wirtz, Daniel Wirtz uh, grade school, Wright's High School, and during World War II in 1945, when they took all the boys that were 16 years old and put them to work in industrial. Plants, and I went to work at, uh, they didn't take all the boys, but they took me. And uh, I went to work at Bashar Siri. Uh, I had a father and two brothers that had been there since, my father had been there since 1918, I think. And uh, so I stayed from 1945 until they closed down and seven years after they closed down, trying to get rid of the place, and I was the last guy that walked out of there that worked for LTV, which owned it at that time. So 89, all the way from 45 to 89, because they closed in 82 and you seven years more. Yeah. Boy, you were the last, isn't that something? Uh, and in fact, I was in and out of the place until I was 75. Wow. Uh, we had a water chemistry lab in one of the old buildings, and, uh, but it, uh, LTV did my own yeah. at that time, private people. What was your most interesting event in those, from 45 to 82? Tell me what your most interesting event, I know there's probably about a hundred, but I, I think every day I went every day. Every day. Every day. Every day Everything was work. new, huh? Yeah. 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 Uh, I enjoyed working there. Yeah. My grandmother worked there. She was a, a secretary there. She worked from 1914 to 1917, right before your dad started there. She was a secretary, and she would type things in carbon, about 20, uh, 10 pieces of carbon paper. Every time I'd look at a piece of something typed up, she'd type 10 carbons. I never typed anything from one. Everything had to be carbon paper. That blue carbon paper was everywhere. I mean, it, she typed letters, and during World War II, she wrote letters to our kids, and she learned it from Cyrus how to use carbon paper, and she typed the same letter to everybody, because a lot of it was news, and then she'd add something on the end for individuals. But she learned that from Cyrus. And I got a picture of her in the old plant, you know, in a, it, was, it wasn't like, it didn't look like a secretary's office, but it was in the, the office in the old plant. Oh, I I've got a picture of it, a great big beam in there, you know, or something, a big, big uh, uh, supporting the ceiling. And I got a picture of her in there, and I don't know who she was secretary to, but she had a pretty good job. Well, Went to Central High School and then locked here for a year, learned how to type and stuff. I know because you had to punch it so hard to get through those ten carbons. I mean, you got to move like that. They're not like the typewriters today that do the work for you. You know, my dad used that same typewriter from all the way till he, uh, uh, 2007. The thing stick all the time too. I've got the old clock. You got the old and clock. I'm sure, she's seen. Oh, I might have seen that in that picture. It might be there. I don't. Was made in 1909. Wow. Uh, it might be it in his old time clock that hung on the wall and it hung there until the 1940s wow. and they bought a brand new one. Isn't that something? But what, the old clock? Oh, uh, we have to take a picture of some of that memorabilia. Try to put it on film so we've got it at least documented and we've labeled it. We might take a picture of that clock sometime. Uh, yeah. It's oh. the made by Gishholt Company. Gishholt, big which German. Later on, Gishholt built. Machine tools. Yes, yeah. But they start out building time clocks. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to okay. yeah. What's your first name, last name? My name is Shirley Hicks, and uh, I am a widow of Lee Hicks, who was uh, 
I worked at Bucyrus Erie, and uh, Lee went to work at Bucyrus when he graduated from high school, and then he went into service in uh, 1942, came home and went back to his job was waiting for him at Bucyrus, which was nice, and, uh, and we were married in 1946, and he worked at Bucyrus until they closed, and um, So 46 to 82 is a long time. He had yes. a lot of years there. You live on yes. the west side then? No, we lived. I, I moved, when I married him, we, I moved him to Boonville. <laughs> <laughs> he had a long commute. Took That's him. an hour a day each, each way, wasn't yes. it? Yes, yes. Um, Bucyrus was a very good company to work for, and uh, I always appreciated uh, that they never go on a lot of strikes, you know, and they treated their people well. And uh, it kept us going many, many years. Many, and we've made a lot of good friends there too. So you're from Boonville originally. That's why you yes. brought him back there. So yes. you know, you might know Mrs. Owen, Dr. Lawrence's wife. She was from Boonville. She was oh, a really? dental tech there. Oh. And you probably know the uh, Mrs. Uh, Poline. They had the little plus on top of the hill. Mr. and Miss Poline had yes. the the parts shop up there. Yeah, Rollin right. and Marcella. Rollin. Oh, yeah, they're Rollin just and Marcella. Oh, Marcella, and they got a daughter who works at Deaconess. Yes, yeah, uh, Sheila. Yeah, yes. they're just the nicest people. And right. then they the, have a son, Ron. Ron, that's right. And Perkins had the grocery up there, and Posey's got the grocery. Posey's got a grocery, but Perkins, uh, uh, Polly Perkins, had a grocery up there, right. and and she was married to the lawyer Wehrenbacher, I think. John uh, Wehrenbacher. And he's from there. And well, you're uh, very well acquainted with Boonville. Yeah, a lot of it's nice people. And, and the five and dime story, Mr. Miller. Mr. Charles Miller, Miller was at, at your parade this year. He was the man Jim, of the parade. Jim Miller. Jim Miller at the parade, yes. and his daughter Tammy used to work with us. They live upstairs at the five and dime. Yes. And that five and dime is like 1950s nostalgia. I mean, I've gone that five and dime. I just, I just can't come out of that place. Uh, the Gibsons come and visit. Uh, we have lunch together, and the Dan always wants to go to always the dive store. Always, that's time and time. <laughs> oh, I love it. You know, I mean, you walk through there, it's like getting through. I mean, it's a nostalgia city, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I, I, it's I, one of the few remaining oh, oh. old businesses. Oh yes, I am. Square. I'm just so glad he made him the he made him the king of the parade, the Christmas yeah. parade this year. Yeah. We yeah. were in that parade with the the SARS, the Sons of American Revolution. So yes. it was yeah. freezing this year. It was probably about 10 degrees, and it was about 90 in that that parade. I was so cold. We were 18. I saw people at 90. I said, my gosh, I'd be an ice cube. <laughs> it was the coldest parade ever. I don't know who was out there. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm glad your husband was part of Bucyrus and I'm glad you came today. And uh, It's uh, always enjoyable to come to this yeah. and uh, see some old yeah. friends, too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure your husband would appreciate you coming, yeah. Thank too. Thank you. Give me your first name and last name again. Shirley Hicks. And your husband's name was? Lee Hicks. And he worked there from 45 all the way to 82 and before the war and after the war, too. Yes, he was there right out of high He graduated high school from Central High School in 41. Uh -huh. And he worked a little bit at the Kroger store, and then he went to uh, Bucyrus, and yeah. that's where he was. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Miss Hayden. You're more than welcome. Yeah. Oh, uh, name, uh, name. My name's Norman J. Ryder, and uh, I've been a resident. Uh, I'm, my name's Norman J. Ryder. I've uh, been a, re a resident of Evansville all my life. I graduated from Royal High School, and upon completion of a high school education, I went to work at Bucyrus area when I was 18 years old. And I had a lot of good years there. I enjoyed it. It was a very uh, rewarding company to work for, and uh, I, I really enjoyed being an employee of the company. And how many years did you work here? Ten years? I had about 31 years. 31, yeah. 31 years. What was your capacity there? What did you do for well, I worked in the machine shop uh, most of all the years, and in the last seven or eight years, the plant was in operation. I worked in the quality control department. Mm -hmm. I took a job in the quality control department. Make sure everything inspected. You had oh, to reject yeah. things. People were mad at you oh, when yeah. you reject them. Well, you you, you reject them, and they're mad. Yeah, you made some happy and some mad. <laughs> <laughs> made the bosses happy and the employees yeah. mad. Yeah. yeah. Um, and where did you live, Evansville? I lived here all my life. West side, Evansville, or east? How well, far did you commute well, to get to work? I uh, lived on the near, uh, near east side, like Columbia 41, you know, Columbia. not too far. I consider myself a west sider. Yes. My yes. dad, you know, all my life, I think, you know, more yes. so. Yeah. Well, Bucyrus is a heck of a plan for Evansville and made a lot of good things, made a lot of good paychecks for Evansville, and a lot of people got a lot of uh, self-development yeah, there. With the exception of a two-year stint in the military, I spent all my time here at Bucyrus area. Yeah. Yeah. Korean War? Or? Uh, it, I'm a Korean War. I, was, I wasn't in Korea, but I went to Germany. Yeah. And I was during, in that time frame, you know, that era, you know, the military thing. Yeah. Well, 
Thank you, Mr. Ryder. Can you say your first and last name again and who this young lady is next uh, to you? My, my first name's Norman Ryder. Are you Ryder? This is my friend, Bonnie Harris. Hey, Bonnie, how are you? Thanks for coming today. Hope you're having a good time. This is a nice reunion. I probably saw you at the at the thing with her sister she, out at the uh, Seton Manor. She, she was there. Yeah, your sister is uh, done out there. Sister your, Jacinta. Sister Jacinta. She's and, doing pretty good. But, more or less, very, not very, uh, she's very sanitary now, you know. Yeah. But it looks good and everything, but, you know, she can't do a whole lot. She's, his uh, sister's at Seton Manor, is that sister at Seton Manor? Seton Manor is a, a big place on the west side of town that, owned by the Daughters of Charity, and it's sort of their place for nuns when they retire. Uh, this is going to finish up our, our 